um, uh, personal issues or challenges that they're having in their businesses and lives, and I'm there to support them, support them in their journey. Um, and the great thing about it is that I come from a business background as well, so I'm very grounded in that as well. So I can blend the two together. But essentially, that's what my journey is all about. I, I hope that answered you. There's so much more. You'd want to roll and sit on a couch, and yes, it's, it, those things are very sacred. So as you know, you, know, you, you, you share s only so much about those sacred divine experiences, right? They're very sacred. So are there any other questions? Any heartfelt uh, ahas or light bulbs from what I've shared with you today? Yes? I missed question two. So um, just wanted to know, you said uh, who, I, or who am I being in the moment was the first one. And uh, the second one would be? Am I living in my highest truth? Am I speaking my truth in this moment? Am I being honest? Am I being honest with myself? Am I being honest with the person? Am I being honest with my husband? Am I being honest with my girlfriends? Am I being honest in my work? Am I living my highest truth? Right? It's good. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very profound. You, you, you're going to surprise yourself. Yes. So very often when you when you kind of hold back and not share what you really want to, like like you, you gave the example of not helping around and not helping with the kids. So how do you communicate that from a place of love? Okay, it's a very good question. Very good question. Because, you know, there's a wisdom. We have to choose our battles, right? We can't just, like, launch an attack all the time. We have to use our better wisdom. Timing is everything in terms of how you share things, and it's also how you say things, right? So... You know, for example, let's use this example. I'm going to pick, are you married? You are, okay. He's not here. So I'm going to pick, he's, he's not helping around the house. Sorry. He's, <laughs> he's not helping around the house. You're exhausted. You're working. You have the kids. You're getting, I hear this story all the time with the women I work with, right? And you, s you, you sit down with your husband and you say, you start off talking about the things that you are pleased with him. You know what, honey? I really appreciate I really, really love how you fixed that shelf. I love what you did. I really love what you did. But you know what, honey? I want to share something with you. Lately, I may not have been communicating this to you, but I'm very tired. I'm very tired. Work is very demanding. And um, the kids, you know, I'm waking up tired, and I'm really, really doing my best. So if you could just help me out a little bit and take the garbage out, on Tuesday, just a little bit, but I just want you to know I appreciate you so much, but I'm just feeling a little tired lately, and I love you, and I appreciate what you're doing. Now, do you see the way you said that? You're not, you're not coming from a place of attack. You're coming from a place of love, of mindfulness, and appreciation. You're saying, you know what? I love you, and I appreciate you. You see, sometimes we tend to attack. You know what? You're not doing anything around the house. You're slamming the cupboards. You're washing the dishes. You're the beginning in passive-aggressive mode. And he's irritated. And you know men, we have to talk, and they want to run. <laughs> you say that to them, but they don't want to talk, right? So it's all about how you say things. But that is an example of coming from a loving place, a loving place. But if you said, honey, uh, uh, you're not doing anything. I'm freaking out, uh, right? Then... You're coming from a place of, of, of fear. You're not honoring your own truth. You're, you're, you're fearful that he's going to be upset with you. Excuse the expression. He's going to be pissed off with you. You're going to get into an argument. And all those fear-based thoughts start multiplying. Start multiplying and you create a wall between you and him. Right? Always remember, truth is love. We have grown to believe that love hurts, and I believe love is the opposite of that. Truth is love. Truth is love, right? When you're speaking your truth and you're speaking from your heart, you're operating from a place of love always. Now, that doesn't mean, remember, we're all on our own different journeys. We're all on our different journeys. It doesn't mean that everyone is going to receive it in the same way. But as long as you are honoring yourself, 
your truth, right? You are living in the light of your own being when you do that. And through that, you're reflecting that light. You're reflecting that light. But some people may not embrace that light, right? But you are living your truth. And that's going to give you inner peace. That's going to give you confidence. That's going to give you a feeling of knowing who you are, right? It's when we fall out of alignment with that is when we start to become unhappy and depressed, and then we start pointing fingers. You did this. You did that. You did that. But really, we're not letting out how we really feel inside. It's always a projection. Do you know what, a, a, what I mean by projection? In every interaction, we're projecting what we're seeing on the screen of our thoughts, right? And seeing through that lens, right? So I hope that clarifies if it makes sense. Ladies, we could all hang out here all day. I have so much more to share with you. And um, But is there anyone else that had a question? And Actually, we do have more time because two of the panelists canceled, so knock yourself out. As I said, this is a room of girlfriends. I want you to feel safe. I want you to feel safe and just share, and let's have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Who's next? Anyone? Anyone? Everyone shy? Yes. Yes. And so, again, you're back to being a little nastier <laughs> because the sweetness didn't work. Yes. So yes. how does one handle that? Well, that is an interesting question. That's a bit of a, a bit of a, um, what do you call it, a rhetoric <laughs> question. Because, like I said, you can only control who you are. You can't control anyone. Okay. You can't. So you're still at the... You're, you're still, but here's the thing. Here's the empowerment. This is the empowerment piece. Is the fact that you are true to you. Always. You're speaking your truth. You're honoring your feelings. You're honoring your emotions. Whether or not it is received by someone else, even though you love this person, even though this is your spouse that you care deeply about, you cannot control how people are going to react and receive you. You just can't. All you can do is be true to you. All you can do is be true to you. So in answer to your question, there is no guarantee, love. There's no guarantee. There is no, you know, your husband, is he's his own person. I'm sure he loves you dearly. You're your own person. But there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that he is going to see things through your lens. No one does. That's why we're all different. That's why we're all different. That's what makes us colorful, right? If we all thought and behaved in the same way, the world would be rather boring, right? It would be rather boring. So, I mean, there's, like I said with this woman, all kinds of different ways that you can communicate better with your spouse. I'm certainly not a relationship expert, but, you know, it always comes back to that fundamental truth. Am I living my truth? Am I being true to who I am? Am I, am I being the real me? Am I showing my true self? Am I wearing a mask? All of the, the um, what's the word, all of the inner conflict that we have within ourselves that we avoid, that rises to the surface in our personal lives and manifests in some funky situations that we attract into our lives. All stems from the inner conflict within ourselves, right? When we are um, suppressing certain emotions, certain emotions, certain things we're not dealing with, certain things we're not seeing within ourselves. And that's why awareness is the beauty Awareness is, is half the battle because when you start to become more aware and you start asking yourself, you start studying yourself, instead of pointing the finger at others, you turn inward and you start examining who you are. Who am I being in this moment? Am I speaking my truth? Am I coming from a place or love or fear? That, it, it, it's like a checklist. Checklist, am I connected right now with my core Am I connected to my heart? Am I living from my heart space?
that's where it's, it, it, spir it spirals all from there, through the awareness. That's my intention here, ladies and gents. That's my intention, is the awareness, that you walk away with the greater awareness for yourself, okay? So um, we're going to pass along the mic to this lovely lady here. She's the panelist. Um, your name is Mary. Mary, okay. And I'm going to pass along the mic to you. <coughs> yes, thank you very much. <coughs> very interesting. Uh, and I'm going to pick up on a few key issues, possibly in a different way. Um, I'm Mary White. I'm a counselor and hypnotherapist. And um, I'm going to pick up on fear and depression uh, because many of my clients come to see me uh, with those issues, depression, anxiety, and stress. And um, they, they are issues that manifest in many different ways. And it's about overcoming those. And I'm also going to pick up on <coughs> your reference to women as being circles. Uh, because I'd like to share with you um, my uh, model, if you like, because I want to um, address the fact that many people do not look within and how important it is to get in touch with our inner self. <coughs> You've touched on everything, but I've, I've got a different take on it, all right? I just want to open these pens. Fighting with a mic as well. So if we take some circles, can you all see the board? All right, you can. So I'm going. Um, so I'm looking at it because I am a counselor and I'm also an academic, I work at university, so I'm afraid you'll have to bear with me because I'm coming at it from a more academic uh, standpoint. So if we put the soul in the middle, right, that is our core. And around the soul, we have our heart. That is our emotions. And we can put around that our spirit. And we're building a sort of onion, if you'd like to look at it like that. Our spirit will be our beliefs, our attitudes. So that is our core. But now the problem that we have is... Now we're going to go square. What are the squares? The squares are the problems. Uh, we don't have a red pen, do we? They're both black.